faithful because he cannot deny his promise. Hallelujah to that. His nature is unchangeable. There's general promises available to all. There's special promises available to certain people. Imagine this. Exodus 20 verse 12. God promises long life to those children who honor their mothers and fathers. But then he says to Moses, tell the people, each family to take a lamb. Kill the lamb, put the blood over your front door. And when the angel of death comes over tonight, you'll all be saved. Now imagine if we all claim that promise. We're going to go down the butchers tomorrow, we're going to get a lamb, we're going to take it home, kill it, and put the blood on all over our front door. The RSPCA will be around your house tomorrow night, quicker than you could have a bath. Say, what's going on here? I'm going to, you're going to be done for cruelty to animals. That's not a promise that everybody can claim by putting the blood of an animal over your front door. You haven't got to pay any more council tax. This was a promise given to a special group of people at a specific time. Then there's personal promises. How many of you tonight, God has given you a personal promise? And you know because you know it's a promise from God. Put your hand up if that's true. Many of you have not seen those promises fulfilled yet, which is what tonight's all about, because we're going to put them on the Bible. And God's going to keep His Word. And God's going to honor His Word. And God is going to fulfill that promise. When you get that personal word from God, it's hard to explain it. But you know, because you know, because you know, because you know, God has given you a promise. You couldn't rationalize it. You couldn't explain it. But you know it. Amen. Some years ago, when I was pastoring the church at Amble Cove, we had an old Methodist church, and we outgrew the building three times, and so we had to build a new one. That's, the old, that's my old church there at Amble Cove. Just look at that picture for a moment. The middle part was about the size of the original old Methodist church building, which we had to knock down. The right side of it was a house that we bought, so we could knock that down because God had given me a promise. Isaiah 54. He said to me, you're going to break out to the left and the right. So I took that literally because that middle part was the old church. We're going to break out to the left and the right of the old church. We're going to, it actually has stretched your tent curtains wide. That looks like a big, big stretch tent really, the way we had to build it to fill up the land that was available. God gave me a promise. And we were going to stretch that wide and we were going to go left and right. And so we knocked the house down. We knocked the church down. But then on the left hand side there was a piece of land and for God to keep his promise... We had to buy that land. I put a price in and then it was in the days when you got gazumped 24 times a day. Remember those days? The price went up and up and up and up and up. I said, God, you've given me a promise. You told me we're going to stretch the tent wide. We're going to go left and right of the original building. How is it going to work? And God gave me that scripture, Leviticus. I mean, if God can give you a promise out of Leviticus, come on. That's got to be pretty good. Leviticus is full of boils on the backside and all kinds of stuff. How can God give you a promise out of the book of Leviticus? Leviticus 25, 23. That was a promise to me. The land will not be sold permanently <laughs> because the land is mine. I want to tell you, I got a bit excited by that. You couldn't make that up. I don't even know how I found it. Sometimes have you found that? You, God gives you something out of his word and you have no idea how you got there. If you were to, if you were to follow the way you got there, I've done this in my own, my own life. How did I find it? I have no idea. I tried to re, retrace my tracks. No idea. How did I find Leviticus 25, 23, when I'm trying to deal with a builder who's gazumping me over some land that we need to build the church, to fulfill the promise that God has given, and God gave me that promise, and within two weeks, they rang me up and said, Oh, we don't know, we don't know what to say this to you, but the builders dropped out. We aren't prepared actually to accept your offer. But can you come and sign now? Sign now? I signed it so quick, he hadn't even put the phone down by the time I was there. We already had the money, we signed it, and God kept his promise. And that's the church at Amble Court today, built on a promise that God gave us. Isn't that fantastic? We give God the praise. So there's legal, evangelical, general, special, personal. There are eternal promises. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Come on, this is a promise. That where I am, there you may be also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. We have a promise from the Son of Almighty God that He's preparing 
a place in heaven for all those that put their trust in him. Amen. It's a promise. Yes. We can't prove it, but we believe it. Amen. You see, the thing about the promises of God, you don't have to prove them in your head. You've got to believe them in your heart. Amen. And as you believe them in your heart and confess them with your mouth, something happens in the spiritual realm. I know it. And God gets glorified. Then there's unconditional 